Peel, from Oregon Trail Silver, and admin on Let's Make Jewelry. Um, today I'm going to show you guys how I solder granulation, or a little what we call balls, silver balls, <laughs> onto a flat piece. Okay. Now assume that I want to take this flat piece and actually curve it. What I'll do is I'll go through these steps and then I'll solder them on after I curve the piece, but I'll explain that to you as we go. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to need is my little piece. I used uh, the tooled leather texture plate for this one from Oregon Trail Silver, and I used um, my monthly Potter Box subscription pancake die from Joni's more recent, um, Joni Kisro's more recent uh, uh, design box, and went ahead and cut this out and cleaned it up. Nothing fancy. So what I'm going to do, well nothing fancy, I really like that design, that pancake, that, uh, pancake die. Um, anyhow, so I'm going to use is a cold chisel and my universal brass hammer, okay? Now the first thing, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here so you can see. The first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is uh, I'm going to take my cold chisel. Okay, it's got a really, really sharp, sharp end to it. There we go. So it's got kind of a sharp end to it, and I'm not going to actually like literally strike the hammer down. All I'm going to do is just give it a light tap and leave a little dent anywhere I want my little balls to sink into. Okay. So nothing major, nothing fancy. Just make sure that it's it's centered and lined up where you want it to go. So this is a technique that I picked off from a. Uh, Kate Ferrant Richborg's Simple Soldering Book. It comes with a DVD and a ton of projects. If you are new to silversmithing, uh, watch this video last. Get that book. I guarantee you, you will not be sorry. Um, I had a heck of a time learning how to solder until I actually read her book and watched the DVD. And then all the pieces just clicked right in exactly where I wanted them to be. And next thing you know, I'm able to solder. So if you're looking to try and solder, that's the book that I'm going to recommend. So now I'm just going to go ahead and take and put another little dent right here in the middle. Now if you hit it too hard, what's going to happen is this centering punch is actually going to, um, the centering punch is actually going to punch through it, okay? So as you can see, I've gotten all these little dents where I want all my little balls to go, okay? Now let's work on making your balls. Okay, so now it's time for step two. Um, if you have got your little divots punched in. Uh, now you got to make your balls, okay? And I usually make them in bulk, as you can see, and I have them in different sizes. Honestly, all I do is I take all my scrap silver and I chunk it up into different sizes and then I will go ahead and um, torch them until they melt and turn into little round balls. Um, you can also get casting grain. Uh, I'm using fine silver. Fine silver works best for making the for making little granulation. Um, so you can use casting grain and then this is an idea I don't know if it's original LA array, but um, basically you just take different size drill bits, put the larger one that you drilled holes through on the top, smaller ones on the bottom, and then what you're going to do is put your little balls on the top and it'll catch the big ones first and then filter as you shake it. It'll filter all your balls down to different sizes. Then I just empty them out into uh, another little bead holder. Okay. Alright, so I'm going to start with these little guys right here and I want to make sure because this is casting green I want to make sure that they're all the same size and that they're all nice and round I'm gonna need about a dozen of them same size okay so keep in mind that these ones right here have already been preformed into little balls all right and really it's not that hard to do you just torch it until the silver melts it's gonna automatically shoop, suck itself up into a little ball and then I usually back the torch away fairly slowly okay so I've got all my little silver balls minus the big one that I'm gonna put in the center and uh, the next thing that we're gonna do is um, grab some paste solder um, I like using cross lock tweezers for this uh, what I'm gonna do is just grab a single ball make sure you get some clean ones Now I like using paste solder for this particular application. Um, it does tend to spread fairly thin. It doesn't take a whole lot. Okay, let me zoom in so you can see exactly what I'm doing here. Okay, so it doesn't take a whole lot. Just a little, little dibble. I'm not sure if I can get that close without it blurring. Okay, and then all I'm going to do is put it paste side down on the little divots. So what's going to happen here is as the solder flows, it's going to actually suck the balls down into those little divots. Okay? Just a little bit. Yes, you can do this. 
with um, your traditional flux and pallion method. No problem. But I like paste solder for this application. So we're just going to go ahead and put all the little silver balls on. Make sure they're at least somewhat on top of the little divots, okay? You're doing yourself a favor. That way they don't have too far to travel to suck themselves in. If you do have uh, flat bottom balls, try and keep the solder on the bottoms of the flat side. There's always at least one little divot that's a little off center that I don't really mind. It's got a little bit too much paste on it, but I'm not terribly worried about it. Okay, so I've got solder on all those, or um, paste solder on all those. Now I'm going to grab a larger ball, and I already know that this that my larger balls, because they came as casting grains, are not perfectly um, uniform. So I might as well take the opportunity and show you guys how to get them nice and round. So what we're going to do is strike a torch on. You'll see just how easy this is. So what we're going to do, see if I can get my camera on it. Okay, so with this little ball, all I'm going to do is heat it up until it melts. And it's going to stay in a nice little ball, but it'll have a little bit of a flat back to it as well. See how it melts? Now I'm going to pull the heat back kind of slowly. And this is just a little piece of casting grain. And I don't like taking my heat completely away. At least not right away, because it tends to leave like little dents in the balls. So then we're going to let it cool off, and I'll do the same thing. I'll put the flat bottom on the bottom center of my little piece that I'm working on, okay? Okay, so this is the easy part. Strike your torch on. And I'm just using a little butane torch, the striker's broken in it. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to start a little ways away, back a little bit so you can see how far back that I am. So I'm really, I'm just going to start, you know, a few inches away and I'm just going to warm the plate up a little bit as I move in a little bit closer. What's going to happen with this paste solder is it'll burn off the organic compound that actually binds the flux and the solder together. And then I'm going to move in a little bit closer. And what you're going to see is those little balls are just going to set themselves right into the little divots that you made. And watch your metal. As soon as it starts to turn pink like that, by the way, this is medium paste solder that I'm using. I'm really not a huge fan of the hard paste solder um, because it, it's, it's so hard to get to flow. But as soon as you see it, your metal start to turn pink, you want to back it off. And then you're good to go. All of your little, so all of your little balls are now soldered on. Um, then you can just take in quick, uh, I would let it sit for a minute, and then quench it and pickle it and then continue on with your work. But that's how I get my little, sil my little silver balls on. Now, if it looks like you're having a really hard time keeping one on, you can always just use the paste and the, um, your, not your paste, your, um, your flux and your pallion method. You can just sweat solder them on, but I found that it's a lot easier to get, you know, less solder everywhere when you use the paste because it does spread a little bit thinner. So when you're finished with this and you get it quenched and you get it pickled, just take your finger and just kind of pick at each ball and make sure it's on there really well, okay? And that's it in a nutshell. I hope you guys enjoyed.